Lincoln Riley is really the guy who makes it all work. Uh, he and Lincoln Riley has put me in this uh, position where, wow, we're, we're on the doorstep yeah. of some amazing things at USC in year one. Like I didn't think we'd be here. And so I have to say, like I was more bullish on USC than most. I thought USC would win the Pac-12. I thought USC would be here in the Pac-12 championship game. I thought USC would win 10 games. And I underestimated the team because they've got 11 and one and they have a chance to make the playoff. And I said before the season, I said all through this, the summer, you know, the playoffs asking a little too much with the depth issues, the lack of uh, heft on defense. Here we are. They're, they're close. And I'm and I'm definitely not like counting this Utah game as a win. I want to get that settled right off the bat. Now, I do think there are some things about this game that set up really well for USC, but like, you know, when you make Drew Pine look good, when you make uh, Cal's Jack Plummer look good, like you cannot take anything to the bank. I, so, like, I'm not overconfident about this game at all. Uh, Utah certainly deserves total respect. And obviously we have a Notre Dame game to review, but just kind of at the top of the show, like I'm not thinking, oh, USC has this. Uh, and we've seen so many Pac-12 teams over the last several years get to this point and then fail. Uh, you know, we, we, we've we seen uh, the, the team that was one win away from getting into the playoff. Uh, you look at uh, Utah in 2019 against Oregon. You know, that Utah team really had a chance uh, to be the number four seed in the playoff and then uh, laid an egg in the Pac-12 championship game against uh, the Justin Herbert, Mario Cristobal, Oregon team. So like no one at USC is counting their chickens and no one no one should be. But just it's still an overachievement in year one under Lincoln Riley just to get to this point. And that's something to keep in mind that if USC does lose because, you know, USC might win, USC might lose. USC is a two-point favorite, so Vegas is convinced this is going to be a really close game. Maybe Vegas could be wrong, but like you know, that that's that's how where the market is right now. USC could easily lose, and if USC does, like this season's not a disappointment. All right, a disappointment would have been falling to nine and three. A disappointment would have been not beating UCLA uh, or Notre Dame. A disappointment would have been falling to the Alamo Bowl. Worst case scenario for USC right now is the Cotton Bowl, I and mean, it's either Cotton or a playoff bowl, Peach Fiesta. And so this season it has already been a rich success. It doesn't mean that, eh, you know, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what happens on Friday. But this is this season has been defined as overachievement. And losing to Utah, if it happens, would not change that. This team still would have overachieved clearly to get to this point. And that is a just a dose of perspective and maybe something that enables this USC team to play freely. You know, like now that USC is right next to the playoff, you know, right on the doorstep of it, the, the guys could think, oh, you know, we could lose this opportunity. We could, you know, this could be taken away from us. And you get nervous and you get tight. But, you know, they played pretty freely against Notre Dame. They played like a team that was seizing an opportunity. We talked about that on last week's show. Just got to continue to think of, of, about this in terms of seizing an opportunity, of doing something special, going for it, laying it all on the line. Certainly what Caleb Williams has done, certainly what Austin Jones has done. Just continue to play with that aggressive, positive mentality. Lincoln Riley said on the field to ABC after this game, you know, he said the culture of this team, the culture in the locker room is awesome. That was his word, awesome. And it really is like this team has a great mentality. And when, you know, when, when we see the defense's flaws, you know, that where Drew Pine didn't throw an incompletion in the Notre Dame game until the fourth quarter, it's not about lack of effort. It's just about you don't have that high end talent that you do on the offensive side of the ball. That's really all it is. The effort's been off the charts. Fantastic. Just, you know, so many superlatives about the way this team has comported itself throughout the season, you know, and it's one loss was just a, a, a gut punch where it fought like heck. Uh, but Cam Rising and Dalton Kincaid, whom they'll meet again in Vegas, they've just made so many special plays. And USC also, you know, got a third and 10 stop in the fourth quarter and hashtag Pac-12 ref said, wait a minute, no, uh, you didn't. So USC could have sulked after that Utah game, could have, could have, you know, lost focus, lost heart. 
No, not this team. Rallied uh, back, uh, won every all the games it was supposed to win, and then rose up against UCLA and Notre Dame. And so here we are, eleven and one. Nothing, nothing that happens from here on out changes the fact that this two, 2022 team overachieved. Period. End of sentence. I'm not going to hear arguments to the contrary. <laughs> So just to confirm, Matt, you had predicted USC to win the Pac-12 championship prior to the season. Yes, ten and two, uh, ten and two through twelve, then get to the Pac-12 title game, uh, and uh, and beat Utah because you know you know I was not high on Bo Nix. Uh, strange, of course, plot twist that really wasn't Bo Nix centric, which took Oregon out of the Pac-12 title game. But nevertheless, yeah, ten and two through twelve, winning the Pac-12. Uh, championship game. That was my preseason prediction for for the Trojans. And so I, I again, I undersold them. 